Okay, so I think it's 3.03, so that's about enough time for you guys to stretch around and dig your holes and things. So we're going to be starting our uh, very good, our very good combinatorics lecture today. And so today we're going to be talking about recursion. And um, just so you guys know, recursion is kind of difficult. Well, kind of. Like it, it shows up sometimes on AMC8. It shows up a bit on AMC10, and it shows up sometimes later. So it's not. So it's really helpful, although it is a bit difficult to understand. So we're going to be going over. We're going to be reviewing the technique, introduction, and introductory problems for a bit longer than normal. Just so you guys know. All right, and yeah. So he, here's our great plan for recursion. So we're going to start with the technique introduction. Go over some a bit more difficult problems. Go over some a lot more difficult problems, and then finally finish with some challenge problems. Okay. So yeah. All right. So this is what recursion is. So, and it's, it's essentially the same, well, as to me, it's the same as magic because recursion is probably one of my favorite parts of combinatorics because it's just really cool. So um, most of the time we're going to be using recursion is if they ask for a value of a large case and we can determine like smaller values. And then also if there's a clear connection between smaller cases and larger cases. So, oh, whoops. So what recursion is? Uh, let's see, give me a sec. So recursion is pretty much when you have like, when it, let's say that we're trying to find like the perimeter of a six by six square, but we realize that we can build this up with smaller cases because we see that the perimeter of a one by one square is four, the perimeter of a two by two square is eight and the perimeter of a three by three square is 12. So then we can see that the pattern is probably going to be adding four each time. So this is like, a t this is pretty much what recursion is. It's like a type of pat. It's when you find a type of pattern between like smaller cases and larger cases. And so here's generally how we're going to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is try to construct smaller cases of the problem. Then we're going to try to construct larger cases using smaller cases. We're then going to make like a guess about how smaller cases are related to larger cases. Then we're going to prove it. And then finally, we're going to use the formula that we derived from step four to build the solution. And uh, if you don't understand, that's fine. I think it'll be a lot clearer with a practice problem. So we're going to start with a semi-simple practice problem. Not super simple, but not too hard either. Okay. So let's, let's say that we have a term. So the first term is a one by one square. Oh, whoops. So the first term is a one by one square. Oh, I can draw squares very well. The next is a three by three square. Woohoo. And the last one is a five by five square. One, two, three, four. Oh, shoot. All right, and then after that and so on and so on. So like the next one would be a seven by seven square. The next one would be a nine by nine square and so on. So we want to find the perimeter of the 18 of the 1,876 figure. So um, I'm pretty sure that the one thing that we really don't want to do is to draw out this. I mean, like, I guess if you had a lot of time, you could draw a 800, 1,876 by 1,876 um, square. It, it would just take you a while. And then you'd have to count out the perimeter. But um, that's not exactly the best way to do it. So one of the ways we can do it is with recursion. So let's see, right? The first thing we're going to do is try to find a pattern between smaller and larger cases. So we can see that the perimeter of the smallest square is four. The perimeter of the next square is um, 12. And the perimeter of the third term is 20. So we, as we can see, each time we add eight. So this makes us suspect that the pattern is adding eight each time. So um, essentially, now that we have a pattern that we think is the answer, we're going to try and prove it. So um, we can see that the pattern is most likely f of n is equal to eight plus f of n minus one. And if you guys are confused about what f of n is, essentially, oh, whoops. Essentially what f of n is, is um, so f of one represents the perimeter of the first figure. f of two represents the perimeter of the second figure. And then f of three represents the perimeter of the third figure. And then so on and so on. So that, and then f of four is the perimeter of the next figure and so on. And the thing is, we, so the reason we guess this pattern is because the perimeter of this figure is eight more than the perimeter of the previous figure. So in other words, this says that the perimeter of the nth figure is eight units longer than the perimeter of the n minus one figure. And then the way we prove this is as follows. So we can see that each time we add another layer of squares around. So for example, if this is the middle square, we see that we add a layer of squares around it. And then this is the previous square here. Whoops. And then we add another layer of squares around it. However, we can see that the perimeter of each figure is the same as that of the one before it except for this, except for these four corners, except for these four corners where we add on eight extra units. So as we can see, like 
f of 3 has the same perimeter as f of 2, except that you add on these four parts, which is why every time we add 8. So as a result, this is our recursion. So does everyone understand that? OK, I got no questions, so I'm going to assume everyone understands that. And from here, we can calculate that the perimeter of the 876 figure is 4 plus 8 times 1875. And this is equal to uh, one, oh shoot, I'm slow at math. Uh, one, five, zero, zero, I think. I think it's one, five, zero, zero, four. I'm pretty sure. I'm decently sure. Yeah, okay. So everyone understand like the basis of recursion where we use like a smaller um, case to add up to a larger case? Oh shoot, my math is wrong. Oh, never mind. okay. So yeah, this is just the fundamentals. So we're going to be moving on to some harder problems now. Okay, so this is the next part of recursion. And it's, oh, it's 14. Wait, no, I'm pretty sure it's 15,004. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, okay. Anyways, so this is the f of x. So in other words, we have another sequence. So this is the first term, so we can let f of one, this is f of one, this is f of two, and then this is f of three and then so on and so on. So we can see at each layer, we add on like another layer of blocks around. So, and now we want to find f of 20. So we want to find the perimeter of the 20th figure. So as usual, we start by trying to find a pattern. So there's four, and then now there's, um, there are, there's 12 here. The next one has 20, I believe. Yeah, the next one has 20. And now we want to find the pattern. And as we can see, it's probably actually going to be the same pattern as before. Because here we add eight, in the next one we add eight, and then we suspect that the next one we also add eight. So then um, from here, again, we suspect that the pattern is going to be f of n is equal to eight plus f of n minus one. And once again, we can prove this pattern like this. So we can see that in the second figure, the first figure is right here, right? So, and we can see that this, that we can see that this side, oh, whoops, we can see that this side corresponds here, this side corresponds here, and then this side corresponds here, and this side corresponds here. And then the only parts that we're adding that are extra are these two lengths, these two lengths, these two lengths, and these two lengths. So we're adding on eight extra units of perimeter. So here, if we do this again, um, oh wait, it says area. Oh wait. Oh shoot, oops, I messed that up. Okay, no, no one saw that. Okay, uh, anyways. I definitely read that problem correctly. Okay, so sorry, we're trying to find the, no, the area of the squares this time, not the perimeter, my bad. So, <laughs> sorry, so we can see that the pattern here is the first one is one, the next one is five, the next one is uh, 13. So the pattern is plus four, plus eight, and so on. So we can, so from here we suspect that the pattern here is f of n is equal to f of n minus one plus four times n minus one. Oh, yeah. Oh. Sorry about that. That was my bad. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah. So from here, we're going to have to prove this pattern. So the way we do this. So we can see that on the second figure, the number of squares we're adding are one, two, three, and four, right? And then this is the figure from the previous one. For the third figure, we can see that this is f of two. This is the figure for f of two. It's just a plus. Whoops. And we can see that we're adding on, we're adding on eight extra squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the thing is, we can see that for each side, so um, if we call this the length, so we can see that each time it grows by one. So you, as we can see here, the length is one. Now the length is two between two arms. From here, the length is three between three arms. So from here, we can see that um, each time we're adding on an extra like quote unquote arm to the picture. So in f of three, so to get from f of two to f of three, we do f of two plus three plus three plus three plus three because there's four different arms. There's one arm, two arms here, three arms here, and then four arms here. And then from here, we also have to remember to subtract four because we're over counting this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that's how we prove that this is the correct pattern. So does that make sense? Any questions guys, feel free to ask. We're available at all times, okay? Uh, if there's no questions, I'm just gonna continue. So from here, now that we know the recursion, we can finish by getting the fact that the first square has an area of one, then we add four. From there, we're going to add eight, add 12, 
and then we're going to add all the way up to four times 19. And then there are like a couple of different tricks you can use to make this summing faster, or honestly, you could just sum it out all by hand or whatever. But um, in the end, you should get that your answer is uh, 761, I believe, right? Yeah, 761, I okay. got Equal to uh, 761. Oh yes, drawing it out will also work. Although again, it's probably going to take you just a bit. N not, not that long, just pr pr pretty long. All right, Let's see then, all right. Mm. So now we're going to move on to the hopscotch snowflake or it's actually called the Koch snowflake, but we're going to call it the hopscotch snowflake because I think that's more interesting. So um, the first, so here, in case you guys are confused about what this is, did I code this? No, I found it on the internet because I'm, very good. I mean, I probably could code it, but like, I don't know. Anyways, so moving on. So we can see that the first term of the sequence is an equilateral triangle like this. And from here, for each term, what we're going, so for each subsequent term, we're going to take all the sides of the previous triangle. So as we can see, this first term has one side, two sides, three sides. And then for the next term, we're going to cut it into thirds. So like this. And then with each middle third section, we're going to add on an equilateral triangle like this. Whoops. Uh, does that make sense? Oh yeah, this is a very good equilateral triangle. Sorry about that. And then for example, to get to the next figure, we would cut each side into thirds again. So it would be, okay, I'm not gonna draw this one. And then after that, we would add another equilateral triangle in the middle of that. So as you can see, here's a good diagram from code because I'm not skilled enough to draw this stuff. Yes. I am planning to be an artist when I grow up, definitely. All right. So this is a Koch snowflake. And we, what we want to do is we want to find the perimeter of the ninth figure. All right. So the one thing that you definitely don't want to do is draw it out again, because this is going to take like a very, very long time. So instead, what we're, going to, what, we, what we're going to want to do is try to find a pattern. So we can see that here, the perimeter of the figure is 243. But then here, we can see that each side is cut into thirds. So we can see that each side here, we can see that this side, this side is cut into thirds, this side was cut into thirds, and then this side was also cut into thirds. And the thing is, we can see that um, the middle section gets turned into an equilateral triangle. So the middle section suddenly doubles its length, like here. So for example, if we had like this length, this length would become like this, where each of these segments are equal. And the thing is, we can see, we can see that, um, and yes, it is a bit convenient because, yeah. So we can see that if we cut this into thirds, then after, after, we, after the next term, it becomes this. So from here, it's pretty easy to see that um, if this, so each side length gets multiplied by four thirds. Because it, as we can see, this one only has three, three sides, but then this one has four congruent sides. And since the same thing happens to each side every single term, um, we can see that each time the perimeter just gets multiplied by four thirds. So f of n is equal to four thirds times f of n minus one. Whoops. All right, so does everyone understand how we arrived there? Yes, it's uh, four thirds times f of n minus one. Oh, okay. Um, if you're confused, so pretty much each time, so every single move, so e each time we, uh, each time we go to the next term, what we do is we turn each side length, we divide it into thirds, and then we turn the middle section into an equilateral triangle like this. So the reason, so then, well, this one only has three segments. This one only has three segments. This one has four segments. So each side gets multiplied by four thirds. So now the perimeter in total is also multiplied by four thirds. All right. So therefore, this is how we get this recursion. Woohoo, that's great. All right. And from here, we can, uh, to find the ninth figure, we can use our recursion to get that the answer is 243 times four thirds to the eighth. And this is equal to two to the 18th over 27. And I don't have two to the 18th memorized, so I won't be uh, computing that out. So this is the, perimeter of the ninth Koch snowflake picture. All right, so everyone understand? 
All right, great. All right, so now we're going to be moving on to the next problem, which is rich is fit. Because as you know, I, I exercise a lot. So that this is why I'm buff enough to um, walk up my stairs. Okay, so I'll give you guys some time to read the problem. Yes, my staircase is very long. Oh, come on. I, I'm pretty sure I, I'm decently fit. Okay, guys, like, I might not be as fit as, like, I don't know, LeBron James, but I think I'm pretty fit. Yeah. So then, this is, like, this is a more, this is a type of recursion problem that you're more likely to see during, like, an actual contest. So we can see that if this is me, this is me, and then we have a seven-step staircase. Okay, this is not seven steps, but whatever. And we can see that I can either walk up one step or walk up two steps each time. So then this is what we're going to be doing. So um, we can see, so we want to find a pattern between the larger ones and the smaller ones. So we can see that, okay, so for our first step, so like, let's say that this is, let's say that this is the ground floor, this is the ground floor, this is the first level, and then this is the second level, right? And I'm standing right here. Woohoo, this is me, okay? So we, for the first step, I can either choose to walk up one step or I can choose to walk up two steps. If I walk up one step, then after that, I'm not, if I walk up one step, I now have N minus one steps left to walk up. So in other words, there's F of N minus one ways to complete that, to complete the rest of the journey. And if I decide to step up two steps like this, then there, instead of N steps, there's now N minus two steps. So as a result, there's N minus two different ways to finish walking up the stairs. So this is our recursion. Uh, does everyone understand that? All right. Uh, all right, sounds good. So then from here, this is, so now that we have this recursion, we can solve the problem pretty easily. So the first thing that we do is we find F of one. So it, for example, if my staircase had one step on it, how many ways are there to um, finish walking up the steps? How, I'm just wondering, so how many ways do you guys think? No, there are not 21 ways, just so you guys know. There's one way, good job. So there's one way to walk up the stairs. So if my staircase has two steps, how many ways are there to walk up my stairs? Good job to those of you who said two. The other people are incorrect. It is two. So from here, we can finish by using the recursion. We see that f of n is equal to f of n minus one plus f of n minus two. So f of three is equal to three because it's one plus two. F of four is equal to two plus three, which is equal to five. F of five is equal to three plus five, which is equal to eight. And then from here we can get F of six is equal to 13. And F of seven is equal to 21. Woohoo, so that's some cool recursion, right guys? Oh uh, yeah, I'll cover the cloudy method. Okay, so um, if we have time, I might have time to go over the cloudy method. Although I don't think we will, so most likely we'll go over it next week. Although I did prepare some stuff on it. Okay, let's see. So now, okay, so does everyone understand? I'll give you guys some time to quickly ask some questions. Uh, yes, I'm from the greater Houston area. Oh, uh, Benjamin, which, oh, uh, which part do you need help with? Is it just recursion in general or like? Okay, uh, if you still have questions, uh, I think we're going to move on for now. I'll answer some questions at the end. Although, if you guys have any questions, you can ask Stephanie. She's very, uh, she, she'll be happy to answer all your questions. Oh, how did I get the equation? Okay, um, so for our, for, okay, so since there are seven, since I can either walk up one or two steps at a time. So if I, if I, if the first step I choose to do is walk up one step at a time. So let's say that the first thing I do is walk up one step. So in this case, there used to be, I used to have to walk up N steps, correct? But now, I have, now that I've already walked up one step, there are n minus one ways to finish walking up the rest of the steps. So that's how we get f of n minus one. If, there are two, if I choose to walk up two steps for my first move, I now have n minus two steps left to walk up. So that's where I get f of n minus two. Okay, so I hope that made sense. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next problem.
which is a very good problem. Okay, so I'll give you guys some time to read this problem. Very accurate representation of Stephanie, by the way. Oh, for those who are wondering, I wrote this problem because I care a lot about the rest of the people who are doing this with me, you know? All right, guys. So anyways, now that we're going to, now we're going to go on. All right. So this is similar to the last problem just a bit more harder because now we can either walk up, sorry, now we can either tumble down one, two, three, or four steps. And the staircase has nine steps. So let's say that, so for example, we now want to find a pattern between the larger cases and the smaller cases. So again, let F of N represent the number of ways to tumble down N steps. So for the first, so for the first move, Stephanie can either, Stephanie can choose to tumble down one, two, three, or four steps. If Stephanie chooses to tumble down one step, then she now has n minus one steps left to tumble down. So she has n minus one steps left to tumble down. And in this case, this is equal to their f of n minus one ways left to tumble down. Let's say that for the first move, Stephanie chooses to tumble down two steps. And again, since there are n total steps and she's just tumbled down two, there are n minus two steps left for her to tumble down. So this is how we get f of n minus two. From here, and like similarly, if she tumbles down three, there are n minus three steps left. And if she tumbles down four, there are n minus four steps left. So this is plus f of n minus three plus f of n minus four. So does everyone understand how I get this recursion? Oh, um, it, oh, the reason we do it for 16 hours is because the other eight hours are devoted to working, to uh, creating some material for flash math. Woo. Oh, sleep is for the week. What are you guys talking about? Okay. Anyways, so now hopefully since no one else has any questions about this, we're going to quickly move on to the bulk of the problem, which is solving it. So there are nine total steps and we want to be able to apply our recursion. So the first thing we do is find the, is find F of one, F of two, F of three, and F of four. So that way we can apply our recursion in order to uh, get F of nine. F of three and F of four. Okay, so let's say that there's one step. How many different ways are there for Stephanie to tumble down the steps? Let's see. Okay, so there is one way for her to tumble down the step because, um, yeah, she, there's only one step for her to tumble down. So if there are two, if she, if, if her staircase has two steps to the second floor, then how many, then how many ways are there for her to tumble down two steps? Yes, two ways. And similarly, um, if there are three steps, okay, so if there are three steps, it's a bit more complicated because she can either choose to tumble down all three steps all at, the at a time, tumble down two steps and then one step, tumble down one step and then two steps, or tumble down one step each time. So there's four different ways for this. Yes, four. And if there are any, is, and just wondering, does anyone know how many ways there are to tumble down four steps? This one's a bit harder, so. Don't be worried if you can't get the F of four. Okay, yeah, good job. There's eight ways to tumble down four steps. And I'll quickly write them out. So she can either tumble down one step every single time, tumble down one step the first two times, and then tumble down two, tumble down one, tumble down two, then one, go two steps, one step, and then one step. You can do uh, tumble down two steps twice, tumble down three steps, and then one step tumble down one step and then three steps or tumble down all four steps at the same time. All right, so from here, we get that F of five. We can use our recursion now. We can get the F of five is equal to F of four plus F of three plus F of two plus F of one. So there's 15 total ways for her to tumble down five steps. For F of six, we, we have to add up two plus four plus eight plus 15. So there are um, 19, 29 different ways for this. F of seven is equal to 29 plus 15, 29 plus 15 plus eight plus four. So there's 56 ways. F of eight is 56 plus 29 plus 15 plus eight. So there are uh, 23, 
85, 108 ways for her, I think. Yeah, 108 ways. And then finally, f of 9 is the final one we're going to calculate. And this is equal to 108 plus 56 plus 29 plus 15. And the answer here is 208. So our final answer is 208 ways. That's a lot of ways for Stephanie to tumble down to the bottom. So Stephanie will be interested. Stephanie will have a new way to tumble down to the bottom for like two thirds of the year. That's pretty exciting. So um, does anyone have any questions? Okay, so now we're going to move on to the last example. And uh, note that this problem can actually be pretty easily done with casework. But, uh, you know, well, we don't want you to use casework on this problem because we're working on recursion today. Okay. So, um, so this is similar to the rest of the problems, except that it's not like stuff, except it's not like uh, going upstairs or walking downstairs. Instead, we're tiling a one by 10 strip of blocks with blocks of size one by one, one by two, and one by four. Okay, so I'll give you some, okay. I'm hoping that you guys have already read the problem, although there's a chance that you haven't. So I'll give you like two more seconds to read the problem. Okay, two seconds is up. So now we're going to start uh, working on this. So um, since there's, so again, okay, so this is very similar to the last problem, right? So we have F of N for the number of ways to tile N blocks. And we want to find this in terms of like F of N minus one, F of N minus two, et cetera. So, I, so if we look at the last block, so the last block can either, can either be a one by one block, a one by two block, or a one by four block. So let's say that the last block, whoops, let's say that the last block is a one by one block like this. Oops. Uh, if we choose to tie the last block with a one by one block, we can see that if, if there are n blocks previously, there are now f of n minus one total blocks left. So there are f of n minus one total ways to do the rest of them. So let's say that we decide to tile, let's say that we decide to tile the last block as a, as a one by two block like this. Uh, very good drawing skills. So this is a two by two block, one by two block, sorry. Now there are n minus two ways to left to tile the rest of them. So this is f of n minus two. All right. So now finally, there are um, four. So the last thing we can do is to tile the last block with a one by four block. So it's like this. So now that, now that it's a one by four, since we had n blocks previously and we just filled up four of them, there are f of n minus four ways left to do the rest of them. So this is our recursion right here. Does everyone understand how we got this? And the reason there's no f of n minus three is because there, we can't put, there's, we're not allowed to put in a one by three block. So that's why there's no f of n minus three. And yes, a lot of recursion problems are similar. Although in the problem set, we'll go over some problems that require a bit more like thinking than just directly applying uh, casework, than just directly applying recursion. So now that we have this recursion, uh, again, we're just going to start by finding f of one, f of two, f of three, and f of four. So for f of one, how many ways is there to tile a one by one block with blocks of size one by one, one by two, or one by four? Yes, one. Okay, so how many ways are there for tile in f of two, for f of two? Like if we have a one by two block, how many different ways are there to tile a one by one or one by two block? With, sorry, a one by two block with blocks of size one by one, one by two, or one by four. Yes, two ways. All right, and then similarly for f of three, we can see that there are uh, three ways, I believe. For f of four, we can see that there, for f of four, we can either tile it with one one by four, two one by twos, or some amount of one by threes, I think, wait. There are, uh, let me think. There are, um, wait. So I think we, yeah, so we can tile it with either, we can tile it either with one one by four, whoops, we can tile it with either one one by four, two two by twos, two one by ones, like this. Well, we can use all one by ones. Yeah, okay. So in total, there are six ways for us to tile a one by four block. And then from here, we can just finish by using our recursion. So f of five is equal to f of four plus f of two plus f of one by our recursion. So this is six plus two plus one. So there are nine total ways. 
For f of 6, there are um, 9 plus 3 plus 2 ways. So this is 14. For f of 7, there are 14 plus 6 plus 3 ways, so 23. f of 8, there are 23 plus uh, 9 plus 6. Yeah, yeah, whoops, sorry. And this is uh, 38, I think. Yeah, 38 ways. And from here, we can similarly calculate f of 9 to be um, 61. And then f of 10 is finally equal to, uh, let's see, 37, 98 total ways. There are 98 total ways to tile a 1 by 10 block with blocks of size 1 by 1, 1 by 2, or 1 by 4. So does anyone have any questions not concerning dihydrogen or whatever? OK. But um, the problem is you're not allowed to use computer programs during contests, so yeah. Oh wait, 23 plus 9 plus 15. Yeah, what? Oh, uh, which one is wrong? Wait, uh, wait, did I mess up somewhere? Shoot, let, let, let me make sure all my addition is correct. <sighs> Um, nine. Oh, wait, oops. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, shoot. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, did, I just realized I did it completely wrong, so. That's my bad. All right, so, uh, yeah, I accidentally did f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 3 and then f of n minus 4. So, whoops, we're going to quickly redo some of this. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. So we can see that f of 5, f of 5 is equal to 6 plus 3 plus 1. So this is 10. f of 6 is equal to 10 plus 6 plus 2, which is 18. f of 7 is equal to 18 plus 10 plus 3. So this is 31. f of 8 is equal to uh, 31 plus 18 plus 6. So this is um, 24, 55. Similarly, we can calculate f of 9 to be um, Let's see, 86, 96. And then we can get f of 10 to be, uh, let's see, 114, 169. Yeah. All right, so 169 is an answer, not whatever I got last time. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I thought that this was f of n, I thought it was f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 3 plus f of n minus 4. Yeah, but the actual recursion is f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 4, so. Okay, I'm sorry, okay? Not everyone can be perfect. So, yeah, this is how we do it. So does anyone have any questions? Oh wait, you forgot f of nine equals f of, wait, did I do this one wrong? Oh no, I did. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's equal to f of seven plus f of eight plus f of five, okay. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the problem set because hopefully everyone understands this, all right? So I'll give you guys some time to read the problem. OK, so now that you guys have hopefully had enough time to uh, read the problem, we're going to uh, move on to the main part. So, this is, this, is just, this is just a similar stair problem to the ones that we've been doing. So um, we can see that Joe can either climb up one. Oh, by the way, this is from AMC8, sorry. This is from AMC8, in case you guys are wondering. So Joe can either climb up the stairs one, two, or three ways at a time. So we can get the recursion f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 3. And this is similar to just how we do it for the rest of the recursions. So does everyone understand how we get this? Um, no, that drawing is not from AMC8. I, I, I found it. Okay. Um, n, so um, f of n is just the, f of n is just the number of ways. It's the number of ways to go up n steps. Climb up n steps. Okay. So now from here, we can see that um, there are three ways. So does everyone understand how we got this recursion? Uh, this is from 2011, I think, or maybe 2010. I can't remember. It was, it, it's an old AMC. So then, um, 
similarly, we're just going to calculate the smaller values. So we can get f of one is equal to one. F of two is equal to, um, f of two is equal to two, I believe. And f of three is equal to four. And now from here, we can just do the rest of it. So we can use our recursion to finish off. So f of four is equal to seven. F of five is equal to 13. And then f of six is equal to 24. So does everyone understand? If you have any questions, you can ask now. Uh, Darren, please stop spamming. Okay, so doesn't look like there are any questions. So now we're going to move on to the next problem. All right, so this is a game of basketball passing. So I'll give you guys some quick time to read the problem. Oh, uh, wait, wait, which, wait, you need something? Uh, okay, I'm going to assume that you guys had enough time to read the work on here. So I'm going to quickly move on to the next problem now. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next problem, which is nobody passed to you. All right. So yeah, I'll give you guys some time to quickly read the problem. Um, no, I did not play basketball in high school. I was not good enough. Okay, so um, now that you guys have hopefully had enough time to read the problem, I'm going to draw the basketball in the meantime. This is a good basketball. I think, I, I don't know how to draw a basketball. Okay, anyways. Okay, so anyways. So now from here, we're going, oh yeah, I am still in high school. But I wasn't good enough to play in my freshman year, so yeah. Okay, so um, let's see. So um, unlike the other recursions, this one is a bit different because we can't just declare like f of n as something and then finish the problem. Instead, we're going to have to do something like a double recursion where we have like two different sequences. So this is how we do it, right? So for example, let's say let's define f of n. Let's define f of n as the um. Let's define f of n is the number of ways number of ways for um for sue to have the ball after n passes have ball after n passes whoops n pass and then after this we're going to define g of n as the number of ways for either polyphemus or nobody to have the ball after n passes for other all right and the thing is we're now going to get a relationship between f of n and g of n, and then solve the problem from there. So these, so unlike the other problems, we're going to, have to do a double recursion, like here. Or at least I call it a double recursion. I'm not sure what the formal name is. All right, so from here, we have, um, let's try to quickly find a relation. So, let, so let's say f of n is the number of ways for Sue to have the ball, right? So let's see. So clearly, in order for Sue to have the ball on the nth turn, she cannot have the ball on the n minus one turn. Because if she has the ball on the n minus one term, then that means that she um. That means that she uh, what's it called? Oh yeah, that means that she um, because she can't pass to herself. So therefore, this has to be equal. So therefore, one of the other two goons must have it. So therefore, f of n is equal to um two g, two times g of n minus one. Oh, and also if this is unclear, um, you we can, okay. So g of n is the probability for someone else to have it. So um let's so let's say that g so g of n is the probability that so g of n is the number of ways for polyphemus to have it and also g of n is also the probability for nobody to have it and the re the reason that there are the same the reason that there's the same number of ways for them to have the ball after n turns is because it's symmetric because um sue starts with the ball and there's a symmetric amount of ways for polyphemus to have it and nobody to have it after g of n turns so does everyone understand how we get this recursion because Sue is not allowed to pass to herself. Okay, come on guys. Sue, it says they have to pass from one to another. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can just ask now. All right, so now we're going to have to, but we can't just finish the problem from here because since it's a double recursion, we have to find an expression for G of N as well. So what is the probability that someone else has it, right? So let's say that 
G of X, let's say that we want Polyphemus to have the ball. So clearly, it, Polyphemus himself cannot have the ball on the n minus one turn, because otherwise it's like a travel. However, it's, if Sue has the ball on the n minus one turn, then it's possible for her to pass to him. If nobody has the ball on the n minus one turn, then it's possible for nobody to pass to Polyphemus as well. So therefore, G of n is equal to F of n minus one plus G of n minus one. So this is from Sue, and this is from nobody. So does everyone understand that? If you have multiple personality disorder, well, I'm pretty sure you're still in one body, so it doesn't count. Uh, okay, I'll quickly, re uh, okay, I guess I'll quickly re-explain both of these. So, um, because it looks like some people are uh, a bit confused and uh, travels are illegal in this game. So you can't pass it to yourself. So f of n is the number of ways for Sue to have the ball after n passes. So like, let's say after eight passes, then f of eight is the number of ways for Sue to have the ball because they have to pass to each other. And then g of n represents the number of ways for someone else to have the ball after n passes. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So for example, so for example, g of seven is the number of ways, is the number of ways for Polyphemus to have the ball after seven turns. And however, we also, however, we know that g of seven is also the number of ways for um, nobody to have the ball after seven turns because of symmetry. So that's why, that's why g of n represents both. So g of n is the number of ways for Polyphemus to have it. And it also is the number of ways for uh, nobody to have it. So from here, we, we're able to get these two recursions because, so we want to find an expression of f of n in terms of f of n minus one and g of n minus one. So if Sue has the ball on the nth term, then she cannot have it on the n minus one term because she has to pass it to someone else. As a result, either nobody or Polyphemus must have the ball. So therefore, on the n minus one term, um, there's two g n minus one. So this represents Polyphemus having it on the n minus one and nobody. So this is how we get two times g of n minus one. And then we want to get an expression for g of n minus one. Sorry, for g of n. So let's say Polyphemus wants to have the ball on the nth term. However, this means that Sue, either Sue or nobody must have the ball on the n minus one turn. So there's f of n minus one ways for Sue to get the ball on the n minus one turn and g of n minus one ways for nobody to have the ball on the n minus one turn. So, and, okay, yeah, so that should be the recursion. So any other questions? Okay, so now from here, since there's no many questions, we're going to quickly finish up the problem by doing some of the calculations. So um, we know that, so we know that there are, uh, so, so uh, since Sue starts with the ball, f of zero is equal to one because she starts with the ball. And similarly, we know that g of zero is equal to zero because on the, when the game immediately begins, Polyphemus and nobody, it's impossible for them to have the ball. So from here, we can calculate f of one is equal to uh, two times g of n minus one. So f of one is equal to two times g of zero. So f of one is equal to zero. Similarly, we can calculate g of one to equal f of n minus one plus g of n minus one. So f g of one is equal to f of zero plus g of zero. So this is equal to one because it's zero plus one. So now we get the f of two. We can similarly calculate f of two is equal to two. G of two is equal to uh, one. Now f of three is equal to two. G of three is equal to, g of three is equal to three. F of four is equal to uh, six. G of four is equal to five. F of five is equal to um, 10. G of five is equal to 12, 11. And then, um, sorry, this is 11. And then F of six is equal to 22. G of six is equal to 21. F of seven. And then we can finally calculate F of seven is equal to 42. So 42 is our answer. So this is like the main way we do a double recursion. So most of the time we want to do a double recursion when we have to like think about two separate events in terms of each other. So double recursions are sometimes a bit more complicated than single recursions. So don't be worried if there are some problems on like the homework or something that you guys can't do. So, yeah. So does anyone have any questions? Okay, good. So now we're going to move on to the next problem. Woohoo. So this is another semi-simple problem, just a normal single recursion. 
although it is a bit, it is styled a bit differently. So you have to make sure that you recognize recursion when you see it. So I'll give you some time to uh, quickly read the problem. Uh, yeah, what, what, if you have a question, you can, yeah. Um, no, I don't like jazz music. I normally listen to EDM because EDM gets me moving. Okay. Anyways, so this is, okay, no, we don't want to use casework on this problem because as we know, the topic is recursion and recursion finishes this problem a lot faster than doing casework. So from here, again, we're going to be trying a form of recursion. So let F of N be the number of subsets of one, two, of, of like one, two to N that does not contain two consecutive numbers. Uh, let, so wait, hang on, sorry. Uh, let F of, so let F of N, let F of N be number of ways for, um, sorry, number of subsets, sorry. Let F of N be number of subsets of one, two to N, of one to N that don't contain two consecutive numbers. And we want to find an expression for F of N in terms of smaller ones by using recursion. All right. So now we're going to, um, so now uh, we're going to quickly get a recursion and we can see, so let's see, right? F of N is equal to. So we can either choose to contain, okay, so let's look first. So let's say if a subset contains, um, wait, okay. So let's say that for example, our subset of F of N contains seven. So if it, if it does contain seven, then we know that it cannot contain six. So as a result, we now want to find the number of ways to contain the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. And we know that there are f of n minus two ways to do this. So now let's see that, now let's see what happens if we don't contain seven, right? So if, if we don't contain seven, then we are, this time we're allowed to contain the number six. And we want to find the number of ways to contain the numbers one, two, three, dot, dot, dot six. And this is, this is one less than seven. So this is plus f of n minus one. So this is our recursion. So this is a bit more, this is a bit more hard. This is a bit harder to find than like just the normal walking up the stairs problem. But do you guys all understand this? If not, I can re-explain it. Okay. So now, now since it doesn't look like there are any questions, I'm just going to move on. So again, we start by finding F of one, which is equal to, um, I think it's equal to two actually. Yeah, F of one is equal to two. We can calculate f of two is equal to three. And from here, the rest of the numbers are just a Fibonacci sequence. So f of three is equal to five. f of four is equal to eight. f of five is equal to 13. f of six is equal to 21. And then we can finish by getting that f of seven is equal to 34. So everyone understand that? Oh, why is f of one two? Oh, because um, the two subsets with one, you can either have an empty set or you can have one. Yes, I like basketball. Um, explain the first part. Okay, so um, the way we get this, okay, so we define f of n as the number of subsets of what, the numbers one through n that don't contain two consecutive numbers. So we're going to find do casework on f of n, right? So, um, whoops. Wait, what, that did not work. So let's say that, let's say that our f of n Let's say that in the subset, we include the number n, right? The thing is, we know that our, num we know that our subset cannot contain two consecutive numbers. So if, we contain, so if we contain the number n, then we cannot contain the number n minus one, right? So therefore, the number of ways to finish the subset is just f of n, it's just f of n minus two. However, let's say that we don't, let's say that we choose not to have the number n, right? In this case, it's just the number of ways to contain the numbers of from one to n minus one. So this is f of n minus one. So does this make more sense? Uh, okay, hopefully that made more sense. So now we're going to be moving on to the next problem. Oh, shoot, we're actually almost out of time, but okay, we're gonna quickly hopefully finish this problem. So I'll quickly give you some time to, re oh, why is f of two, three? Okay, I'll just quickly explain this. So for f of two, we can either have the empty set, one, or two. So all of these sets work. So that's why f of two is equal to three. Okay. So now we're going to be moving on to this problem and I'll give you guys some time to read it. Why does three not work? Wait, what do you mean? Um, 
Okay, hang on. Uh, why does three not work? Oh, because this is f of two. So f of two cannot contain three. Uh, I'm not sure what you really mean by f of three, but we're gonna to have to quickly move on to the next problem. So if you have any questions, you can ask Stephanie or something. Okay. Yeah, so I'll give you guys some time to read the problem again. And actually, this is probably going to be the last problem. So I might add the last, the cutting pizza one to your handout. Right. Sorry, to the homework slash problem set. Right. Uh, let's see. Wait, right. so this one. So now that you guys have hopefully all read the problem, the reason this problem is a bit more difficult is because we want the total number of colorings, not the total number of like uh, arrangement not the total number of ways to arrange the dominoes. So for example, if we had two dominoes that looked like this, and like it was shaded like this and shaded like this, this is the exact same as having two dominoes that are like this, and then they're uh, shaded like this. So even though the fact that we use two different types of dominoes, the colorings are the same, which makes this problem a bit harder to count. But again, we can use recursion. So let's let, let's let f of n represent the number of ways number of ways to color a um, two by n board. And we want to find an expression for f of n again. So um, this is a bit more difficult, right? So um, again, we're going to consider what type of coloring the last domino has, right? So like, for example, let this be the final column of the domino row. All right. So let's say, for example, so the first case is if the last domino so the first case is if the last two colors are the same. So for example, let's say that both of the colors in the last column are black. Well, in this case, we know that since each domino has one black tile and one white tile, then the dominoes must look like this. Uh, does everyone understand this part? The reason we can't have like, the reason we can't have horizontal dominoes here is because in this case, we would have, um, in this case, we would have a domino with two black sides. Okay. So now this is why we'd have to have a horizontal domino that looks like this if the last one, if the last coloring is the same. So from here, we can get that this is equal to two times f of n minus one, two times f of n minus two. And the reason for this is because now we've finished coloring the last two columns here. And then the reason we have a two is because either the last column can either be black or the last column can be white. Either way, we're going to be filling up the last two columns. And then the next case, is when the last two have a different coloring. So for example, like this. So like if we have this, if this, if this square is shaded, but the bottom one is not. All right, but the thing is in either case, we know that this color is white, right? And as a result, we know, and as a result from here, we, we have that the last, we have that the last column is now colored. So this is just equal to F, there are F of N minus one cases from here. So we just add on two times F of N minus one. And the reason we multiply by two is because this domino can either look like this or we can have a domino that looks like this. Either one works. And either way, we finished coloring in the last column and we know that there are f of n minus one ways to color the rest of the domino. So does everyone understand this? All right, good. And by the way, know that on some of the homework problems, like right now, it's so when you see the recursion, it's really easy to see why it works. But most of the time, the hard part is actually finding out what the recursion is. So like, don't, don't feel bad if you guys can't find the recursion because that's generally the hardest part. And then the easy part is just like, you know, writing out all the numbers. So yeah. Right. So um, if we have a two by one board, then there is um, F of one. If we have a two by one board, then there is two ways to color it. If we have a two by two board, there are I think still two ways. Wait, no, there are, um, there are six ways to color it. And then from here, we can finish by getting that F of three is equal to eight. F of four is equal to uh, 14. F of seven is equal to 22. Oh, whoops, F of five, not F of seven, my bad guys. And F of six is equal to 36. All right, so does everyone understand? If you have any questions, feel free to ask. All right, good. So um, not, not, we have like three, four, five minutes left. So you guys, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll go back to like those questions if you had questions.
Um, why is f of two six? Oh, so f of two is six because um, let's see here. Whoops. Give me a second. Oh wait. Oh okay. Oh sorry, I did actually do the problem. Oh whoops. Okay, yeah, I messed it up. Okay, hang on. Uh, I'll quickly wait, give me a quick second to redo this. But anyways, so the reason f of two is six is because we know that um we're going to have so if we have a two by two board, we know that we're going to have to tile it with um. We know that we're going to have to tile it with two dominoes, right? So in this case, since each domino has one white and one black space, we know that we're going, we know that exactly two of these tiles are going to be black. So two of them are going to be black and two of them are going to be white. And the number of ways to choose the black squares is four choose two. So that's where we get F of two is equal to six. Okay. And then from here, we get that, uh, so from here, we can finish the recursion. Sorry, I did mess this up before. So we get f of three is equal to 16. f of four is equal to 44. f of five is equal to 60. And by the way, the way we get these numbers is just by using this recursion up here. And then f of six is equal to 104. And then we can finish by getting f of seven is equal to 328. Woohoo. So does anyone have any other questions? Okay, looks like there are no more questions, I think. Oh, wait. Oh, I asked for f of six. Oh, wait, did I? Wait, give me a second. I think I might have. Uh, wait. Oh, shoot. I keep doing this wrong. I'm sorry, guys. Holy crap. Today is not like the best day. So please cut me some slack, okay? Um, I know that I'm not as, I, I might not be as good as your school teachers, but you know. Oh, shoot, no! Okay, uh, just try to delete this part. All right, delete this part. Okay, so from here, we can, sorry about that, we can get that um, f of five is equal to 120. And then we can get, the, wait, is this right? Yeah, and then f of six is equal to 328. Okay, my bad guys, my bad, my bad. Okay, now, now, now there we go, f of six is equal to 328. All right guys, so I think we're out of time now. So hopefully, hopefully you guys understood that. I'll be putting the cutting pizza is, I'll be, I'll be putting this problem onto the uh, handout so you, you can know. And um, if you guys, if you guys to look, oh, there, there is like homework or practice problems to practice the techniques we covered today in number theory and combinatorics at kidteachkid.org slash flash math resources. I'll be posting the link in the chat. And you guys can go there to see the lecture problems, lecture solutions, um, and the uh, problem set slash homework that we guys have to uh, give you guys some more stuff on this. Um, we're pro okay, since I think I have to explain the cloudy method, I'm probably just going to go over it next week because we didn't have time to go over it this time. So yeah, we'll go over it next week. Most likely if we have time to get to it. All right. And, uh, okay. Okay. I'll quickly read, I'll quickly do one more time to explain the F of four. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you guys want, you guys can leave now because it's four one. So yeah, good job guys. Bye. And then if you guys want to see why F of two is equal to six, I'll quickly re explain that. Okay. So the reason four choose two is equal to six, right? So we have a four by four grid and we know that we're going to be putting on two dominoes, right? So we're putting on two dominoes. And then the thing is, we know that there is one, we know that there are two black squares and two white squares. And the reason for this is because each domino has one black square and one white square, right? However, since there are four different, however, since there are four different squares and we have to choose two of them to be black and two of them to be white, there are four choose two equals six ways. So that's why we get f of two is equal to six. And yes, there's an answer key. It'll be posted later in the week. Um, the answer key for last week's homework or problem set will be posted shortly. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, um, I think that's it. If you have any other questions, you can quickly ask. If not, then uh, yeah, we're going, to, we're, going to, uh, we're going to shut it down now. And hopefully we guys see you tomorrow for the, uh, what's it called? For Isabella and uh, Andy's algebra and geometry thing. So hopefully we see you there tomorrow and yeah, bye. Oh yeah. After we post the link, we're going to uh, quit out the broadcast. Okay. So uh, if you want to go to the resources, this is the resources page. Oops, flash map. Oh uh, yes. You, uh, to go to questions, you can join our uh, remind at code flash math, or you can go to the following website. I'm about to post in the, you can go to kidteachkid.org slash flash math class questions. So if you have any questions, you can just go to this website that I just posted in the link. Actually, you can go to the website I just posted, go to that link, just email us a question. We'll get back to you as soon as you can, but you know, we're kind of busy. So we'll try to get there as soon as possible. So uh, yeah, bye guys.
have a good day, everyone.